Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Tim Apicella, the new host for a new program and a new format. Instead of live streaming a show from the studio, our new show titled What's on Your Mind Hawaii will take place on the streets of Honolulu. This program is about hearing from you. We value your opinion and we want to hear from you. Topics will range from local, state, and national headlines and issues. I will interview people that are willing to share their opinion about what is important to them, what is important to their families, and what is important to their community. We believe what you have to say will be important. Following the tradition of Think Tech Hawaii, our new show, What's on Your Mind Hawaii, will strive to shine a light on and walk in the path of its mission. The mission of Think Tech Hawaii is clear and simple. It is to raise public awareness for a better Hawaii and to be the leading digital media platform promoting civic engagement in Hawaii. We want to host a rational, thoughtful, open-minded dialogue that best envisions our best prospect for the future with due respect for lessons of the past. With this mission in mind, we hope you will join us to express what is best for Hawaii and how to improve it. With me today to introduce and discuss this new show in its new format is the founder and CEO of Think Tech Hawaii, Jay Fidel. Jay, thank you for helping me kick off this new show. Yeah, tell me how you really feel, Tim. I feel wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really excited about this. I think, um, you know, on the street, you do a lot of on the street interviews, and to dedicate a show just to uh, getting people's opinion on the street, I think it's, it's, it's something that, it's, it's gonna be a good thing. Yeah, it is. I think <clears throat> it's important to reach out. So often the media folds in on itself, and uh, they, you know, they send it out, but they don't get it back. Um, this is getting it back. This is finding out what people think. This is really important. Um, in a community, you know, in building community, you've got to have that kind of exchange. Well, that leads me to my first question, Jay, and is what is the state of civil discourse, not only in Hawaii, but maybe in the country? Huh. <laughs> Tough question. <laughs> well, you know, I think a lot of people have turned off. They've abdicated, you know, from the conversation. And uh, they grumble to their friends, maybe, but they don't really speak out. They don't want to go public. They're afraid of going public. Uh, this gives them an opportunity, and it gives us an, an opportunity to hear from them. And I think it's really important to make them comfortable um, in, in, in involved in candor, you know, and expressing themselves um, on how they feel about things. And it makes it's a valuable piece for us because it allows us to hear from them. So I think it's good. I think there are going to be challenges with this show, though, you know. Uh, you've had experience on the street before, and you know that, uh, you know, sometimes there's nobody around who wants to talk to you. And you've it's got a lonely to, place, Jay. It's a lonely place, and uh, you've you got to somehow pull it off. There you are um, in the street with, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a good place in the street. You've got to choose a good place um, with a cameraman there, uh, a camera operator. Um, and you're, you're ready. You're ready for content. Uh, and you've got to approach people, you, or they've got to find you. They've got to know who you are and what you stand for, and, you know, think tech and uh, open platform kind of thing, Hyde Park, if you will, uh, where they can say anything they want. And you've somehow got to connect with them. This is not so easy, especially when you're live. You know, we're going to use our live equipment on this. And so um, every second counts. You can't stand there in the street and look at the and look at the buildings. You know, we are going to do some tape segments, though. I guarantee you that. Okay, well, we, we have, have to, to because <laughs> I'm not like you, Jay. I'm not as glib as you are, and uh, you can fill up a 29-minute uh, uh, segment with the greatest of ease, <laughs> where some of us kind of uh, limp along and struggle. Oh, you'll be fine, Tim. <laughs> so I want to get back to the state of. Um, civil discourse or non-civil discourse. <laughs> Civility isn't always the order of the day. Um, do you think because of our recent election cycle that people have pulled way back um, because they think giving an opinion about anything that's related to the state of affairs in this country directly correlates to the politics of the day? Do you think that's why people are a little reluctant to share their opinions? Some of them are. You know, I mean, uh, Trump's presidency is a really strange <coughs> duck when it comes to the kind of exchange you're talking about. I mean, he attacks the press, uh, and that's because the press, you know, reports on him, and he doesn't like uh, hearing from them. He attacks anyone who is opposed to his views, and people really, after a while, um, you know, I don't know if it's fear or just, I don't want to go there. 
it may be, I don't want to get involved in this. I don't want to have the risk of him attacking me or his government attacking me. You know, if he attacks me, then God knows what he will cause his agencies to do to attack me. We are all, as citizens, vulnerable in some way. Nobody's perfect. Do you think perfect. there's some element of a perceived fear of retribution? If, yeah, I do. Really? Yeah, sure. That's quite a statement. I mean, he is, well, he's, he's, he's shut the press out of the White House in many ways. Uh, he, has, he has blocked people he doesn't like from his Twitter feed, believe it or not. Um, and, and that, you know, pervades down through ripple effect through his government. He's planting political agents through his government. This morning the news was that he's planted a political agent in the Census Bureau. My goodness gracious, which is supposed to be totally apolitical, now we're going to have a political operator there. I mean, he's really, I don't know what the right word is, but he's, he's violating the norms of, you know, of how you make appointments all through the government. It's not just in the Supreme Court. It's everywhere. And, and the result is that people are concerned that he will do things that you don't like, including to them if they speak out. You're either for him, stroking him, or you're against him. And if you're against him, um, the, the message seems clear that he's going to go after you somehow, or at least he may. And, and that possibility, I think, changes the way people um, think about making public statements on their views of this administration. That is quite a statement, Jay, because what I'm <clears throat> kind of uh, formulating is we've gone from a democracy and within 12 months, we've gone to a, a repressive regime. If that is truly on people's minds, worrying about how the commander in chief could somehow, in some way, retaliate against someone voicing their opinion about something that's important to their lives and their community, um, in 12 short months, um, that is quite a statement to make. And I, I find that actually very troublesome. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Do you sense it the same way? I mean, I don't know if people realize. Sometimes it's like subconscious. Why do I want to get involved in a conversation which could get me in trouble? Right. The other thing is there are Trump supporters, too, right, even in Hawaii. Right. And the Trump supporters may not tell you they're Trump supporters. Um, you have this, Like the polls. Say, yeah. Like the polls. Yeah, you know, the you polls know, show yeah. quite differently because they're not willing to admit that they're supporting a particular candidate yeah. here. Yeah. So, so I, mean, I think it, you, you may, you may sit, make a public statement and find that there's somebody out there who doesn't necessarily tell you he's a, or she is a Trump supporter, and then they, you know, it's politicized. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're in, a, in, a, in a spot. So um, I think the conversation has been dampened, uh, even on Thanksgiving. There were so many articles. There were. I was going to just mention that. Be yep. civil on Thanksgiving. Don't get into a Trump argument on Thanksgiving. And you know what? They had Trump arguments on Thanksgiving. It was inevitable that there would be an argument about Trump at a lot of Thanksgiving uh, dinners. Uh, because one side, the other side, and then people become reluctant to reveal themselves and express themselves when that kind of argument is going on. I know a lot of uh, tables around uh, this state, maybe in other states, there was an announcement that there will be no political discussions at this table. In fact, I was um, present at one where that announcement was made. Yeah, but let's, let's uh, call a, a spade a spade. It's not really a political argument. It's an argument about him. Yeah. It's an argument about his policies and what he's doing, and people are polarized on that, on him. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know. But it's interesting how that question. subject of, of the, our, our president has actually in some ways stifled ability, uh, people's ability to opine about many different things, many other things. But this seems to be dominating the, the, the plate, if you will, of, of public opinion. Yeah. And it seems to be dampening the, um, the ability to, to uh, express one's opinion. Yeah, and it's sucking the oxygen out of, out of the, the conversation. That's a good point. You can't feel free about it. So that's why this is important, what you're doing. Um, the idea is you're giving people an opportunity to make statements, and hopefully they will. Hopefully you'll have the, the charm <laughs> that will permit this to happen. The big hope. <laughs> Look, let me ask you a question. Let's say there's a, we're in a city which there is only one news publication, and, and that would be the case here in Honolulu. Um, if you had a choice, if, there was, if the paper was making a, a big decision to either have an editorial column or a political cartoon, what do you think is more important? <laughs> are, you, are you distinguishing this news market from other news markets? No, I'm just saying there's the political cartoon uh, mm -hmm. avenue of um, voicing an opinion and a, an expressed um, position on politics, 
or there's the editorial column where there's, you know, there's the written word is being used to express an opinion. But uh, both are very, very e oh, effectively very, very, very powerful. Powerful. Very powerful. Cartoons be, look at Salman Rushdie, the, the author who um, <coughs> he, he made cartoons and uh, it was right around that time. And, and now these cartoons got people excited and death threats and the like. So, and you've uh, been hiding for years. They had to. Yeah, yeah, he's coming out now. Yeah, he has I mean, been it's, out. It's enough time has passed. The fatwa has been The danger has passed. Yeah. But it was that whole era where there were books and cartoons, and someone rushed it, was somehow in the middle of it. Um, hopefully, we won't see that, that kind of reaction. But, but, I, but I would say that um, the newspaper has to have both. It has to have the cartoons, which are so powerful, and draw certain people. Uh, they, they look at the cartoons first. Uh, and not to say that's, that's a, a bad way to communicate, it's a good way to communicate, but I would like to see the op-ed pieces, I'd like to see the editorials, and I'd like to see them freewheeling. You know, we don't need editorials about how motherhood is good for you. We need editorials about, about, about controversial issues, issues that have to be resolved for the benefit of our society. Um, so the newspaper's got to step up sometimes and hit those issues. Well, that's why I'm hoping this new program, What's on Your Mind Hawaii, will actually try to get to that point. Um, I know people are reluctant sometimes to to opine about something that's controversial in fear of alienating their friends or families. And um, I hope that we can get past that because I really do want to hear what people are thinking. Now, some of these interviews may take the form of tourists on the streets of Honolulu down in Waikiki. Um, they may have an opinion that and they have no fear of someone you know, here that might be offended by what their opinions are. So it's possible I will from time to time be talking to tourists and, and getting a read on what they think is going on. Yeah, well, it is kind of anonymous because you don't ask them their names or anything. You don't ask their background. I usually ask for a first name. You do. That, well, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, that makes it a little easier for them to speak freely. And tourists uh, have very interesting opinions sometimes. Um, the, the problem is that sometimes you talk to people and they haven't read the paper in a long time, and they're not really uh, uh, aware of some of these issues, not really informed about them. Um, and we, we need to know that too. We need to know the level of awareness. I mean, some people feel that this community has an adequate awareness of, of public issues. I don't. I don't think think tech does. We, we believe that we have to raise the level of public mm -hmm. awareness and, and that the media should be doing that all the time. And so you'll be doing that. When you ask a question, you're, you know, you're raising awareness, not only by having this individual think about your question, but by having others see the engagement that you have. Right. And I think also, um, which has always been the case, and I think even more so now, is that the level of public awareness, is there's a direct correlation to how busy people's lives are. You know, do they even have time to you know, either pull a newspaper or get online and, and check? True. That's check. true in Hawaii if you have three jobs. Yeah, it's and, very difficult. You know, we have a low unemployment rate, but gee whiz, so we have too many jobs and too little pay for those three jobs. And, and um, you know, with all the obligations in life, um, people with three jobs don't have a lot of time to read the newspaper or get anything but the 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock news, which doesn't tell you a lot. Or by then, um, they're still trying to make dinner, try to put the kids to bed. All that. And by the time they get to all that's being done, uh, they may have, you know, five minutes to sit down and, and think before they have to get up and do the next chore. Yeah, so that's another challenge for you. you know, you've got to try to find people, A, who are willing to talk, but people who have something to say, uh, or who can listen to the question and learn something in the process. Um, but, you know, there's unfortunately a lot of people, including tourists, who just are not, not, not aware. Yeah, that's um, true. And I think you're going to run into the, um, you know, the Trump uh, polarization issue, too, yeah. if you ask questions around national politics. We're going to get back to um, sources of media when we come back from our commercial break. I'm Tim Apicella. This is What's on Your Mind Hawaii, and we'll be right back. Hello, hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the host of the Cyber Underground on ThinkTechHawaii.com, uh, airing every Friday at 1 p.m. And I love Think Tech Hawaii because it allows me to get the word out about cybersecurity and how dangerous this world can be with technology. Well, for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. 
Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours, so please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website. It's on the screen right now, www.thanksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, Mahalo for your generosity. Hi, welcome back. I'm Tim Apicella. I'm here with the founder and CEO of Think Tech Hawaii. And today we are kicking off a new show called What's on Your Mind Hawaii. The show is dedicated to getting your opinion. And rather than do the show in the studio, I'm going to be out on the streets of Honolulu um, asking people on the street what their opinion is about subjects that are important to them, whether it be a local issue, a state issue, a federal, national issue, things that are important to them, to their families, and to their community. So, Jay, thank you again for joining me to kick off this show. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. I really like the idea of you going out. So where do you plan to go? I mean, uh, you can go downtown, you can go to Waikiki, you can go to the university, you can go to the legislature, city hall. Um, you can go points west also. I mean, what, but what's the plan, at least in the, in the near term? I think the near term is I'm going to go probably in a more urban district. Um, it depends kind of what the, the, the news of the day is. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be looking at the, the, the headlines in the newspaper, what's on, you know, the major news channels, and say, okay, what's important? And then figure out, you know, am I going to be on the beaches of Waikiki as people stroll by? Am I going to be down in the uh, central business district of Honolulu? Am I going to be out in Nanakuli? Um, one never knows. One never knows where I'm going to be. Well, I hope you identify yourself with a hat. Some kind of logo thing to indicate. I gotta that, talk uh, to you about that yeah. hat. I mean, this, you know, hats just don't wear well with they me, and right. they don't well, fit well. Yeah, and poor, you poor guy. I know uh, it's, it's a tragedy. Shirt, something, logo, something. Yeah, we'll have something. Uh, that, we have the flag on the microphone. I'll that, have that. That helps to some yeah. extent. I'll have that. I think people should, you know, get to know you and sort of see you coming. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I would talk to someone looking like me without proper identification on the logo, so be warned out there in the public, be warned. <laughs> There's this whole question about how you approach somebody. I mean, yeah. some people are really good at it. I think you're good at it. You know, you, you, can't, um, you can't make it formal. You've got to say, hi, how you doing? Uh, I got a question for you. Would you talk to me? <laughs> Go, no, we won't or, talk or, to you. Or, well, some of them, some of them will happens. say no, Tim. They yeah, will no. say no. Happens all the time. It goes back to what I was talking about before. There's a, a certain concern about being involved in the public conversation. It's really too bad. Yeah. Um, but but uh, you know, I think I think that's part of the program that um, you know some people that you approach will not want to talk to you. They will, and you can tell because they look away. They don't. You know, they they, they don't. You know, they walk away from you. Uh, they ignore your. You know, your your. Um, you're looking at them. They speed up the gate in their step. Yeah, that's right. Go to the other <laughs> side of the street. I it happens. The, pro the problem in a live show, we should talk about that, the problem in a live show is uh, how do you deal with the time? And the answer I suggest to you is uh, you keep on talking about what you're talking about. You never stop, even if you don't have a guest in front of you at that minute. Yeah, well, that's, that's the art form. Yes, it is. That's why you're so good at it, because um, talk about something that's not in front of you, yet you're, you're still walking, looking for a new person to interview. Well, that that, that is the art form. to be prepared. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to talk about a given issue, if you're going to talk about the, the census, for example, uh, you should know about the census. You should know what the news is and what it means. And then so you're walking down the street. Ho hopefully somebody will come in and engage with you. But in the meantime, you're telling people, because it's live, uh, what about the census? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Given the fact that some of our news services, be it CNN on one spectrum and, and, and Fox News on the other spectrum, do you think that opinions that are obtained by those news agencies somehow clouds the opinion? Um, do you think it diminishes in the value of a, a person's opinion because of a news source of one, of one flavor or another? I heard a piece on that, or a comment on that this morning on NPR. Uh, about how experts are no longer held in the same stead. We have so many experts, and some of them are, what do you want to call it, fake experts. Um, they pretend to be experts, but that you hear all these experts you know, yelling at you involved in these multiple guest conversations on all of the news, news conversation channels on television that you, you, start, um, you start questioning all of them. 
and you start questioning the conclusions, it just seems like a, a fest of some kind rather than a, a rational discussion. And then they grab on some point something that happened and they work it until you say, is, do I need to know this much about this one point? Right. So I think, I think the answer is, um, you know, there's a crisis of confidence in, in that kind of media. And um, people are kind of looking for some kind of stable, you know, a thoughtful discussion. So a person like you who's reasonable and willing to hear all sides, um, and a conversation that doesn't, that doesn't get polarized. Um, I think this is really important now, especially now. Well, in media, we've always had this perception, and I don't think it's an accurate perception, that uh, your newscasters and your, you know, those out in the field were completely unbiased. But I don't think that's humanly possible. I know you try to do your best to be unbiased over a particular topic and issue. Uh, look at Walter Cronkite in 1969 when he came out vehemently against and on a, and news, on a news show uh, against the Vietnam War. That was really earth-shattering for Walter Cronkite and you know, CBS no, News to do something like that. enough about it. You know, I was watching, um, and it was actually, this was produced by uh, Tom Hanks and others on NPR, um, was it NPR? Uh, a couple days ago. And uh, it was the story of the 90s, the story of the 90s. It was really a fabulous program. It went yeah, on I've for seen hours. That. It is a good, well and, produced. Um, they, they do decades, right? <clears throat> this happened to be the 90s. And talk about, uh, you know, the political threads of the 90s and the uh, terrorist threads of the 90s and the social threads of the 90s, so three or four different subjects. and. <clears throat> that way they, they sort of sliced and diced the 90s so you could go back. And you had a, a handful, I would say six or eight or maybe ten newscasters, uh, the Walter Cronkites of their day, I suppose, who were always, you know, giving the news um, through that decade. And I thought to myself, gee, they're, they're fairly credible. I liked them, I believed them that, then, and I believed them in retrospectively. And, and those guys were, you know, national icons. Some of them, not all of them, but uh, you had the feeling that they were really trying hard to give you a fair shake on the news. Um, query, do we have that now? With some, maybe. But, I, you know, I think in general, uh, people don't feel the same way that they felt about these newscasters back in the 90s. And that's only, what, that's only 20 years ago, really, right. but most of it. Um, I think there's a perception that the media has a... Um, a loaded bias, and it just depends on what station you're you're tuned into, and either that bias does you know support my belief system and my values and my attitudes, or it doesn't. And so I'm going to tend to tune in for those news stations that support what I believe and what I think is of value. That's unfortunate because if you never hear what the other side is saying on on a particular issue, um, that's where the polarization of the United States becomes so dramatic and so pronounced. But and if I think you find a given media is always selling you something you can't believe, that's, you that's logically true. cannot believe, and I don't want to name media here, but right. everybody knows um, that happens, um, then you, you're going to tune off on that. You're going to be offended. You're going to feel your in, in, intelligence is being insulted, and you're not going to listen to them. <laughs> of course, the argument is made that in doing that, you're putting yourself in your own bubble <clears throat> and only listening to what pleases you. So there's, there's an issue, and everybody has to solve that for himself. We have a few minutes left, and I would yeah. like to, yeah, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to talk about where things have been in the last 10, 15 years about media blogs and the ability to opine on a blog and how that is either enhanced or diminished. Um, one's opinion, and, and you had mentioned about experts, so-called experts. Well, people who blog sometimes aren't experts, yet they are blogging as if they are an expert on a particular subject or, or a, a whole variety of subjects. I just want to get your opinion about blogs and what you well, think. I, blogs, and for that matter, social media, it's, it's abbreviated, and it's from people that you don't know except that person is a blogger. Now, if you know the, you know, the credentials, if this is a national figure, and he teaches at a reputable school, and you know you, you have information about him beyond the fact that he's just writing that he's writing a blog. Um, then I think you have to take that into account. But you know we need to apply critical thinking on, on the information sources we have. We all do, and uh, you know they teach that in school now. I saw a piece about how they teach that in school. They teach kids critical thinking. I'm glad. And we're I'm glad to hear that. Actually. Reject. 
Well, I think that otherwise they're... We may not get civics one-on-one, -on -one, but at least we're getting on how to evaluate what they see on the, on, right. on, online. And find inconsistencies and find outrageous statements and, you know, treat them as such. Um, but I did want to talk about, uh, you know, the live aspect of this, okay? So <clears throat> we have live view. We have an LU500 uh, transmitter. And it works on, on um, bonding technology. It's Israeli technology, interestingly enough. Um, so that uh, the, our cameraman would go with you on this, as he has in the past, and carry a little wee backpack. And in the backpack is this transmitter, so it's got batteries. And it, it bonds up uh, as many cell phone broadband signals as it can find. It has multiple modems in it. Okay, and it sends this back, and we get really crisp video and sound from you. Uh, so it's not just that the camera operator is taking, you know, the, 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 you know, the video of you. He's sending it back real time. Now, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing, this technology. It hasn't been around that long. I mean, other people have it, but it replaces, you know, the, the truck affair. With right. the satellite yeah. dish and all that, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of gear in the truck. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Everything is different. Just as social media is different now, and you know, and you get all these uh, short tweets from people, and you're expected to accept that, and people, some people do accept that. Um, now we have citizen journalists. In fact, Think Tech is a citizen journalist organization. Oh, excuse me. That's okay, Jay. Um, well, I'm going to formulate my next question, and we don't have much time left, but the, the question is, has Facebook, Twitter become the uh, avenue of venting, whether logically or illogically, whether it's an argument or a quarrel, have these social media become the, the forum of, of venting? Uh, we have a commander in chief that vents almost daily on Twitter. So um, what's your opinion about that? What do you think? Do you think that's taking place of the, the man on the street interview and getting someone's opinion? Or has Facebook and Twitter replaced that with um, their online venting? Well, I, I, I sure think there's a lot of venting, and uh, there's not that much news. Um, and uh, you, you know, you've got to, like those kids in, in the class on social media, they've got to identify when it's venting and, 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 a, and a, a blather, uh, or when it's real news or real thoughtful opinion. Uh, you you got to make those distinctions. Uh, but I feel, I feel what's happened is the uh, president uh, in inventing and making random uh, statements, I guess he would say from the heart, but it's really not from his mind, um, you know, on, on Twitter has, has changed the way people get and consume news, especially from the government. We have to really be careful about that. I'm going to have to stop there. We're out of time, Jay, unfortunately. Um, maybe you'll be one of my first people I interview on the street to follow on that concept and that, that, that thought. So this is Tim Apicelli with Jay Fidel. The new show is What's on Your Mind Hawaii, and our next show will be on Tuesday, December the 5th at 12 p.m. We hope to see you, and we look forward to it. Aloha.